On this episode of Challenge Accepted, I am here at the Border Grand Theater in San Pedro, California to go on my very first ghost hunt. Challenge accepted. And thank you to Google Pixel 6 for sponsoring a portion of this video. Hi guys, it's so nice to meet you. I'm Michelle. My name is Brandon Alvis from a &E's Ghost Hunters. I've been investigating since 2006. I'm Craig Owens. I'm the author of Haunted by History, Volume 1. My name's Kevin. I've been investigating for 12, 13 years, kind of all over Midwest, West Coast. I'm a ghost skeptic, but I am terrified of horror. I just watched Squid Game and I haven't slept in a week like I did not sleep last <laughs> night at all. I am very easily scared. It'll be interesting to see what happens tonight because you never know in places like these. So welcome to the Warner Grand Theater. It actually opened on January 20th, 1931, right during the Great Depression. What makes this special is that this one was the first Warner Brothers Theater to actually be built for talking pictures. Tonight, we're going to show Michelle a real paranormal investigation. It has a strong emphasis on scientific principles, and we're gonna use devices that are more scientific in nature. So this is what they call K2 meter. Okay. And this picks up electromagnetic energy. And we use this to see if there's EMF in a place, just to know if there's any natural things anywhere. EMF stands for electromagnetic frequencies or electromagnetic fields. It's something that is all throughout the world, not only naturally, but through man-made devices. The higher an EMF gets, the more your lights are gonna light up and they'll change colors. So if you put a cell phone against it or something, it'll start lighting up because it'll pick up that energy. So like if I use... Oh, yep. there it goes. So you can see how it lights up. Okay. Let's get to the very first like paranormal hotspot. Okay. This area right here has numerous reports from not only employees that have worked here, but some people that have scouted. Is that spiking? Yeah, it's about oh, the middle. Oh, you feel it? You're seeing it? It's been three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> You're already getting it. But if you notice, it's consistent. It's not fluctuating that much. And so this means that it's not supernatural, it's natural. And it could be wiring underneath. Some people are way more susceptible to EMF, so that can make you even hallucinate at times. Skin rashes, nausea, high heart rate. Headaches, sweating. Headaches. Could the oh ghost God. stories be associated with that? Maybe. Or is it possible that this high EMF that's in this building is giving fuel to possible entities? That's something you could look at it from both sides. So Manifest there could be something. like this could be just like a big ghosts food trough. here right now. Yeah, it's like a big delicatessen for ghosts. Okay. Shall we continue? <laughs> <laughs> I personally love historic buildings because there's a romanticism to the past. It's like time travel. I want to relive those times. I want to hear those sounds. I want to meet those people. And in this case, I want to see those movies. Maybe the past isn't quite as dead as we're told that it is, and that maybe there's a memory, or maybe there's a personality from the past that's still lingering. Some other people have claimed to have seen like a really darting, maybe shadow figure. It comes from one of the wings, and it shoots up to the projection booth. Projection booth? Yes. So is that the projectionist ghost then? I will say I, I do get a sense of someone or something watching us from that area. So here we are in the projection booth. Oh my gosh. There was a longtime projectionist here. His last name was Lord, and that's all I know. <laughs> Mr. Lord, okay? But uh, he died about 10 years ago, and he supposedly isn't here all the time, but he loved the space and he checks in periodically. There was a paranormal team. They did an investigation, and I saw the video footage, and it looked authentic enough to me. A spool apparently flew off of a shelf and like hit a wall. It was a spool about maybe that big. And over here is an additional room to the projection. So Craig, you said Mr. Lord, right? So no one's actually used that name in an investigation here? Craig? That is correct. So your first investigation, your first time here, I think it's only fitting that you do it. And hopefully he'll answer you back. Okay, cool. Did anyone just hear that? Hmm. You didn't hear that? What was it? straight up sounded like something dragged on the floor and I heard like a deep breath like <gasps> oh really you didn't you guys didn't hear that seriously I didn't hear it but then again I have tendonitis <laughs> so now let's kill the lights and get the investigation started okay 
But before we begin the investigation, I want to take a moment to say a huge thank you to Google Pixel 6 for sponsoring this portion of the video. The brand new Google Pixel 6 comes with a ton of new features, but I gotta say the new camera software in this phone is really what sold it for me. So paranormal investigations require a lot of footage captured and footage review, so we've been using the Pixel 6 as another tool to help capture more footage and photo memories along the way. The Google Pixel 6 takes it to the next level with tools like Magic Eraser to clean up any unwanted subjects that may have popped up in your pic. It's pretty awesome. And the face and blur feature keeps your face in focus even when you're moving fast. If you want to check one out for yourself, be sure to click the link in my description. And thank you again so much to Google Pixel 6 for sponsoring this portion of the video. All right, let's begin the investigation. I'll let you lead the way, Kevin. Are you ready? Here let's we go. go. So one thing that's worked for us in the past, specifically with theaters, is to kind of just set up a few devices on the stage and we kind of just give some space and we start a dialogue. So this is called a Paralyte. So this is an EMF detector, similar to the one you have in your hand there, both. But this one's a little different because- Oh my God, I love it. Oh my gosh, it's like cool. Vegas. Isn't it? <laughs> and it EMF. sounds like Vegas. <laughs> But again, why it's spiking so much now is because, like earlier, this is an area with a lot of EMF. So this is an EDI Plus, what I refer to as the Swiss Army Knife of the paranormal. And what this does is it registers temperature, pressure, humidity, vibration, and EMF. So what we'll do is we'll have this Paralyte here. We'll set up this EDI Plus as well. And you just pick a spot you think is comfortable. And then we'll all kind of spread out and we'll start a session. One thing that we always do is we want to show respect to not only the building, but to the possible entities that may be here. So I'll start off saying, my name's Brandon. I come here with the fullest respect for yourself and this theater. Talk about what your intentions are here. Just kind of get a familiarity with the space. Okay. Um, hello. My name is Michelle. I come in peace. And I am here just to leave here with a better understanding of who or what you are. If you're here with us, can you show us? We come here to learn about you, about your story, what connection you may have to this theater, and anything you want to let us know. Those devices can detect your presence, and we can possibly have a conversation with you. They are not meant to harm you. They will not harm you. We just want to use these as tools to try and have a conversation with you. Just so we know if that was you, the one with the pink light on it, can you make it go all the way up to the top? Can you get close enough to make the lights change colors all the way up to the top? Try a little bit harder. Oh, dude. It went halfway up that time. Can you do it one more time for me? Just so we know, one more time. Give it all you got and see how high you can make those lights go. You guys aren't doing anything. No, we're not. No, we, we would never, ever, ever try and do something like that. And his phone can't be setting it off. No, like uh, I showed you. You notice earlier. since we haven't been asking questions, it hasn't went off. If it was his phone, it would be going off the entire time. So one thing that's interesting, we haven't established who, you know, who we're talking to yet. How would you figure that out? You gotta keep a line of questioning. We call it control questions. For instance, we can ask, if you're a female, can you make that device blink again? So kind of, this sets up a, what? What the f is that? Oh yeah, that was loud. Like that was something slamming, huh? I came from up there. It sounded like a set piece fell over. It sounded, That's what it sounded like. It sounded very, like a set wall or a piece of wood. this is going off again here it too. It was really, really high up. Like, I say we stay in this session, okay. for sure, because we can go find that, okay. you know, but another thing that we've noticed with certain investigations, if things are happening in one area, it feels like something can draw you into a separate area, you know? Did something bad happen to you here?
Is this a happy place for you? There you go. Michelle, ask them if they know Lord. Oh, <gasps> oh that was weird. <laughs> that was weird. Is this Mr. Lord? They booped really high. We're gonna do an EVP burst session. So basically we're gonna start recording, we're gonna ask maybe two or three questions, and then play it back to see if we got any type of response on it. So EVP is electronic voice phenomenon. Most of the time you don't hear them in the moment, you hear them after the fact when you're going back through your audio and video. Is there something you want to show us? Can you tell us into the recorder what you want us to see? Did you know Mr. Lord? Is there something you want to show us? Can you tell us into the recorder what you want us to see? What's that? Sounds like a breath, kind of. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I heard that. Right yeah. there. And that couldn't have been us breathing? I don't think so. Can you hear that? Oh, pressure and temperature change right there. And EMF. Damn, it's going crazy. Oh. Yep. That way. Hey, if you're back there, can you come forward? If you want us to move and try a different area, can you make that light up even higher? So are we moving on? Yeah, let's do it. What do you think? That was really bizarre. That big crash. That big crash, crash is we weird. We need to find out what that yeah, was. Yeah, absolutely. Spirit boxes scan through radio frequencies, and it's said the spirits are able to manipulate the white noise and be able to answer questions and uh, speak words through it. We'll pull this chair up here, and we're gonna set you right here. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna plug the earphones into the spirit box, and so you're gonna be listening to that. Just white noise, just ch -ch 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 -ch. And we're going to blindfold you. <clears throat> and you're gonna sit- Don't we're gonna touch me, right? <laughs> you're gonna sit here, and we're actually gonna step right down there. We're gonna ask questions, and we want you to say out loud any voices or sentences or words you hear come over the spirit box. I'm not a big fan of it. I'm very skeptical. It's all radio frequencies. So anytime you use this device, if you were to take that to a third party, say an audio engineer, it would be declared contaminated. So I'm skeptical, but I think we'll do some pretty cool tests with it here tonight. Oh my God, this is so freaky. Can you hear us? Okay, good. So right now we have Michelle sitting in this room in this chair. Can you go up and tell her what your name is? Do you see Michelle? If you can see Michelle in the chair. Uh, it was like uh, someone saying, oh no, but it was like pitched. It was like, oh no. It's very overwhelming to just be listening to the whooshing and it's very loud. And then out of nowhere, you hear a voice or something like, it's just really freaky. Remember, you need to communicate through Michelle, the woman with the mask, because we cannot hear you, but Michelle can. If you're next to her, can you tap her on the shoulder? How can you let her know that you're here? Oh my God. Uh, it was a male voice, almost like just, came through super clear. Say again. <sighs> Are you here alone? Is there something we can help you with? I don't know that we should go on too much longer. Yes, I was thinking. Is there anything you want to tell her before we go shut the machine off? Uh, 
was a female voice, like, agreeing. There is something else you want to tell us? What do you want us to know? You might want to cut it, Kevin. You know what I mean? That's enough. Can I take this off now? Yeah. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> Did anything happen? We asked if there was anything you wanted to tell us before we left. And that's when you heard the last female voice, like right after I had asked that question. So what was your overall impression? Did you think these voices were radio frequencies coming in blitz, blips and pieces? I, I think they probably were, but there was that like transatlantic 50s like tone. Something that would not be on the radio in 2021 and there was no music. I don't know, you know like how in the movies, people from the 50s like sound a certain way? Cinderella, sound of voice. Yeah, yeah. The very pleasantry that you talked about earlier. But yeah, I could see like, it's sort of like inconclusive. Mm -hmm. Right. What you can draw from that. Oh, very much so, Yeah. very much so. And it may not mean anything in the end. I'm really curious to see how responsive the projection room is. We can go there next. Yep. <laughs> okay. The constant feeling of being watched kind of everywhere we went was a little unnerving. A lot of places felt heavy. It's got a different vibe up here now, huh? A little bit. It does feel heavier. It does. So we know the name of the man who used to work here who passed away 10 years ago, and it's never been used in a paranormal investigation. For the greatest effect possible, should we turn off all of our camera lights and just be in the dark for a bit? We could, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> can you see there us, Daniel? Go. Yeah, I can. All right, so we're up here in the projection room. My name is Brandon. We come here with the fullest respect for yourself in this theater. And we think we possibly know your name and we'd like to speak with you. I understand that you really loved this place and I'm going to leave it to Michelle to ask you about your name. Hello, I'm Michelle. I'm a big movie fan, so it's really wonderful to be in your space. We'd love to know if you're here with us. If you're here, Mr. Lord, please let us know. You all right? Yes. Mr. Lord, um, the general manager of this theater only knew your last name. Uh, we would like to know what your first name is or what name do you like to go by? I kind of get the feeling like something's here but it's just standing back observing. You can see why if there was someone up here, you know, you can see why they would be up here. Whoa, that just flew off the stage. Oh my God. What was it? What? what was that? What the f one just flew off the stage? I saw it move. I swear to God, I looked over there on the stage. Right there, that big ass pillar. See it? Oh I what? saw that. Holy shit. I swear oh, to God, I did. saw that move. Oh my God. We have to go down there. Let's, let's go. Oh my heart is coming on my oh, shit. <laughs> Dude, I saw it like actually did go down. Did any of you guys touch it when we were down there? Nobody's been down there for a what long time. What the actual God. hell, dude? Anybody here? We're coming down. That was the first time I've ever seen something move, like with my own eyes. I, I've never seen that before. Oh, I kept feeling like something was down there whenever we were up there. <gasps> Look, there's another one looking like it would have fallen too had it not been caught. Feel how heavy that is. Feel that. Oh my God. Okay. This is. We're impressed. <laughs> yeah, we're very impressed. The falling linoleum was 120 pounds, according to the employee that works here. Even when I leave it like this, straight up, it's leaning back. And look at this. 
even when I pull on it a little bit, it still oh, rocks yeah. back that way. Wind couldn't have done that. You no. know what I mean? And there is none. And it most likely would have fallen back. What the hell, man? Are you a believer now? <laughs> I don't know what's going on. <laughs> what if we split up? That's how People every horror here. movie starts, Craig. Come on! In the paranormal world, you're lucky <laughs> that, that something like this happened. Believers and non-believers share one thing in common. They see and hear what they want to see and hear. And somewhere between the two is where the truth is. Thank you guys so much for being here with me. Pleasure. Truly an honor to learn from and witness you guys in action. And thanks for letting me tag along. I'm never going to sleep again, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.